Everyone, we apologize. We're running a few minutes late. Uh, the chairman just uh, for this commit first committee just pulled in the parking lots. So give us a few more minutes. All right, apologies for the delay. I'm just rolling back in town. Uh, it is uh, 6.04 and calling EPD to order here on the 7th of August. Uh, everybody's here. We'll open it up for our first public comment period. Does anybody have anything that they want to say? There is a second public comment period. If you order here on reading and approval of minutes. I'll uh, make a motion to approve the minutes as submitted. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. And the minutes are approved as submitted. That brings us to our reports and communications from city officers, and we will start with Mr. Charles. Good evening, members of the committee. Mr. Chairman, glad you arrived safely back in town. Uh, looking at an update for our department, there's a lot that has happened and will happen. Uh, let me get my notes laid out here. So a look back on the budget from fiscal year 23. Uh, we had revenues of $152,000, 483 that we took in from all of our program programming. That represents about a 36% return from the money the city council puts into events uh, from that side. We aim to improve that next year. So uh, be on the lookout for different sponsorships and revenues. We try to drive that for the city. Uh, looking at fiscal year 24, so far our only expenditures um, are in uh, barbecue, um, uh, competition that's coming up, and then budgets, uh, or excuse me, revenues for that is also related to barbecue. So about $7,700 in revenue so far this year. Speaking of barbecue, uh, the next big event for the cultural center will be the barbecue cook-off, September 15th and 16th. Uh, everyone's invited out to that. Uh, 15th will be the Anything But competition where people have a chance to buy uh, different confectionaries and treats and appetizers. And then the Saturday event will be when uh, the real judging of the pork happens. Um, we, have for, we estimate about maybe 2,000 people per day will come out to those events from that side. Um, look for, again, enhanced sponsorships, opportunities, and interactions there. Uh, I know that uh, Mr. Duncan will cover, cover capital project updates, so my overview of these events will be a little bit more um, ceremonial. But related to the bridge, pedestrian bridge, we're looking for dates uh, for a ribbon cutting on that. We're going to try to coincide a little bit with some of Bridgeway's um, ribbon cutting events. They're looking at a soft grand opening, probably early October, mid-October-ish. So we're looking to try to link those up. Um, again, that ties back to what Seth will probably talk about in a little bit there. Uh, related to Maverick Yards, uh, they submitted their first reimbursement request uh, to the tune of about $68,000. Uh, the total reimbursements will be about $1.7 million over the next 18 months. So you'll see that start to hit the uh, budget as we go through here. Uh, then relating back in to close the circle, back to the cultural center, uh, the public art trail is uh, underway um, in collaboration with the Cultural Council. The theme for this year will be Soaring Energy. And we are currently putting out a call for artists. We just issued that, I think today, uh, if I remember correctly. Um, and that is the latest updates of what's happening in the department. 
Anything for JR? Let me just say one thing. I know that uh, you know now that Amped Up Fridays is finished, um, hats off to everybody, not just in community development department, but in all of our departments for working hand in hand to make sure that that goes off or that that went off with, without a hitch. Um, I heard nothing but compliments this year. And um, so kudos to your department and thanks to all of the other departments that helped out. Thank you for your kind words. All right. Uh, so at this point, we'll go ahead and toss it over to Mr. Duncan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Just wanted to do real, two real quick updates as they pertain to projects that directly affect city center. Uh, so first off, I wanted to kind of give everyone a quick heads up on where we are with Jenkins Street and Jenkins Court and the uh, streetscaping project. So um, we have our co Transco has now completed the right of way acquisition, final engineering, and has bid out the Jenkins Street Jenkins Court streetscaping project. Bids did come in within expectations, but were then higher than previously projected. So the bids came back. The low bid was two point nine million dollars. When you add in the traffic design, preliminary engineering, CEI. DEI and right of way, we're looking at a, a total cost just for the streetscaping aspect of the project of $3.6 million. We have uh, GLDTC contributing $1.3 million to the project, and we have previously set aside $780,000 towards the remaining balance. There is a balance to, to come up with, which is $1.5 million, which will be uh, talked about later this evening. Uh, just wanted to give you two quick updates what's kind of slowing the project down where that's going to be impacting the project. Uh, first of all, we're working with Duke Energy on the overhead to underground conversion. That process has been going on for about 18 months, and we're hoping that Duke is going to be getting ready to start making some of those conversions very quickly. There are a number of conflicts within the Maverick Yards piece, but Duke is confident that they can resolve those without any any delays to those developers there. Uh, we are going to have a delay in the railroad crossing. Uh, the railroad is not prepared or ready to, to do the crossing at this time. Duke still has to move some poles further north on Jenkins Street and do a permit to cross over the railroad track at that location. So we are waiting to hear back. Last communication with the railroad is that their costs have increased from about $780,000 to do the conversion to about 1.1 million at this time. So what uh, Co-Transco is gonna do is they're gonna set the road, the streetscaping up uh, to connect to that future crossing. Um, and of course, that the timeline between Duke moving their existing pole network on Jenkins Street up uh, as it curves around and bends up toward where it crosses over, they'll have to move some poles upwards and get a new uh, right away or a new easement across the railroad track. We don't have a timeline on that just yet, uh, for that, but we do anticipate uh, the road construction to begin within probably the next 60 to 75 days. So, and the goal is to at least get Jenkins Court completed, even if Jenkins Street is not completed until the railroad is prepared for their, their new signalization and conversion to that new intersection. Questions for Mr. Duncan? Ms. Kuzner? Are we still going to call it Jenkins Court? Uh, there's, as of right now, that's what it's still called. Um, we could always, um, I believe that starts in the planning commission. Is that right, David? We're looking at changing a name, but city center drive is already taken. So we would have to come up with something. Thank you're, you. You're welcome. Yes, ma'am. Anything else for Seth? I got one more. I just, All right, yeah, go ahead. I'll be quick on this one. So just want to give you a quick update on build a better Butler and how it's going to impact uh, Maverick uh, at the city center project, but specifically Maverick station. So we have seen the uh, kind of preliminary final drawings for uh, this area, which encompasses a number of tracks between uh, 276 and the railroad track. Right now, we do have a number of conflicts which could result in a loss of parking at Maverick Station. We do have a plan on how we can recoup uh, 90, if not 100% of that parking through some parking realignment uh, with part of our driveway out here. So as soon as we hear or get a final kind of drawing as to where the final lines will be, how much right away is gonna be needed, and then what our compensation from the project will be for that, we'll be able to come back to the committee and talk about a specific plan 
on how we're going to address the parking situation. But because they are widening the mouth of of Liberty, or excuse me, Liberty, wrong street, uh, uh, Butler, um, it is going to result in a more aggressive taking of where that sidewalk is now right there just because we're adding a whole new lane for a right dedicated turn lane coming off of Butler on the 241. More to come on that, but um, that's the biggest conflict. The rest of the conflicts are minimum, if if any, and we anticipate some redesign for trail connectivity and others, but uh, the biggest impact is going to be to to right here at City Center and Maverick Station. Thanks, sir. Yes, sir. Anything else for Mr. Duncan? All right, then that takes us to unfinished business, of which we have none, which takes us to new business. And JR? Yes, sir. So the Municipal Association of South Carolina has a, what they call a hometown economic development grant. Uh, this is for economic development projects um, that cities may undertake. So with Maverick Yards now underway and the recent developments with BB&T and we have changes at the fire station, a whole plethora of um, changes here inside what we call our city center village, we felt like it was time to try to adopt a new consulting plan. And so hometown economic development grant provides funding up to $25,000 for economic development activity. Um, we think that if we can get a consultant to come in and do a master plan or event master plan for city center, that way we can follow a dedicated path, maybe identify resources, tasks, um, that would be good. It requires a match of $3,750. So minimal, we have that in my line item uh, that we can tap into, but it also requires a resolution, which you'll see on your next page behind that one, a fill in the blank version. I've already started on a draft of it internally, but we need your support to uh, apply for this grant via the resolution. So that's the request. Any questions for JR? Mr. Craling. I wanna make sure. So what you're really asking here is just the resolution. We don't have to do anything with the funding. It's already, you already have that 3,700. Uh, 3,750, we're getting 25K. I think if I had to reinterpret or interpret what they're saying is that if we apply for 25,000, if I correct me if I'm wrong, that they would give us $22,250 or 3,750 would then to make up, up to 25. I, I think now if we get. Actually, this one's a little slightly different. They'll give you up to 25 and then you add your match. So it actually takes it to 20. 28. Okay, that's good. So more than. When, when I've applied for it in the past, I always do 5,000 as the match and just assume 30 for. But this is specifically designed for master plans for downtown urban areas. And since we're still working on the, the city center project and we've got right a new place, new time with it, uh, might be a, a good opportunity to leverage that resource to, to develop that plan with it from where we are. Ms. Kuzner, you have anything? All right, then um, what do I hear on forwarding to council? Uh, make uh, a motion to forward this to full council. Second. Second. Your discussion. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh -huh. The ayes have it. And we're going to forward this to full council. Which takes us to our second public comment period. Hearing none, committee concerns. With that, that just leaves us one more motion. Make a motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? second? We have a second. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. We are adjourned at 616.
All right, we'll call our second committee meeting on public safety to order. Present, you have myself, both committee men members, Mr. Kraling, Mr. Allgood, and our um, police chief Miller, our chief, um, Chief McCone, and our clerk of court, Mr. Rado, along with other city officials. Um, first, public comment, if anyone has a public comment for public safety. All right, you have another opportunity at the end. That will bring us to the next item, which is reading and approval of the minutes from July the 3rd. What is committee's pleasure? Motion to approve as, as presented. Motion. Second, Mr. Kraling, thank you. Um, any corrections needed? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes from July 3rd, say aye. Aye. Aye, none opposed, motion carries unanimously. Reports from our city officers. We have Chief McCone up first. He's walking up. If you haven't checked your email, check your email. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. So we give you an update on the new headquarters. They're getting close to completion. I talked with the superintendent today. He's looking at probably two to three weeks. They should have their punch list and stuff completed. They've actually put the signage up on the front. I don't know if y'all have seen it yet, but it, it's like it's looking very good, very excited. And like I said, they most of it. I'm trying to remember, they got some stuff in the bay they got to finish up, but most of it is completed. They've actually went and put all the flooring and all that in, so we should be on. They're looking at completion by the end of August, first September. That is indeed exciting. So um, once everything is completed. Or what's the move-in time look like? We'll probably be end of October. It's probably time we get everything moved from here and everything moved from this station to that station. Excellent. Yep. Any questions for Chief McCone? All right. Thanks, Chief. Thank Mr. Rayday? Y'all all on the back row have to travel. <laughs> members of the board um, just a couple quick updates for court um, getting to be set off debt time so we'll be submitting the outstanding fines for debt collection through the municipal association we're starting to go through that process uh, we just completed the annual judicial survey um, we sent that to um, board administration basically outlining our operating costs and our assessments for the year so we're in compliance for that for this fiscal year um, and the other thing we're going to be start working on is um, the 2024 court date. We're going to kind of see how we did some adjusting for the second half of this year and added the two court dates per week. So we're going to kind of go through the um, the numbers and see how they work. And we'll get with the solicitor's office um, and see if the police um, shifts and with the public defender's office and the trial judge just to kind of get a feel for everyone thinks that's working out. You always do a great job with communicating with all those involved. Um, it does not go unnoticed. So the debt collection process, is, d remind me, does that go through, Holly, does that go through finance for any? No? With no approval, it's just a, you just submit it to. Yeah, so what we do is um, they have our initial um, resolution for right. participation every year. The only thing we have to do is send um, updated contact information um, for us and our participation form, but no yearly type of information. Any other questions? All right, thank you. Thank you. Chief Miller. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Curley, Mr. Allgood. Uh, we're doing good on the budget. One of the things we just purchased is the guns. They just recently started uh, qualifying on them Friday. I qualify Friday is where the burn on my face comes from. We just had a year injected round. Got stuck in the glass just from another shooter. But but no, they're they're doing good. Uh, the officers are qualifying real easy here. Uh, That's well, the shadow. What's that? Yes, shadow. Yes, sir. It's the shadow systems. Uh, we're starting. Uh, we're starting to do interviews for a reserve class. We're going to put that in the weekly. Uh, so basically what we'll do is have some uh, people come in and we'll send them through the, pretty much the reserve class. They'll have all the all the uh, 
duties of a police officer. He said basically they do it at their own time and they it's, they don't work for any profit. And it also helps you offset if you're ever short on cash. Uh, uh, Bennett had just got his new little heart. Uh, he's having some issues, but they they seem to bring it and give him a new heart. So uh, he's already woke up a couple of times and said that he just wants to you know, shake his head, tell him he's doing okay, and put him right back to work. So, but everything seems to be going fine. Uh, with the accidents with the police cars recently, uh, we've been me. Uh, Mr. Duncan's been talking on ways to prevent that. So we've come up with a couple ideas like uh, readjusting the cameras inside the uh, inside the cabin, uh, taking the tent off the car. Uh, well, we do have a policy about them having the uh, computers open while they're driving. So we might put that when we see them. But what we're also doing is uh, Mark is going to be meeting with each squad. I think he's meeting at 2 in the morning with the new uh, Thursday to just just get their input on what they think we can do, what would help them, what would prevent traffic accidents. So at this point, are you, you're just looking for maybe, um, you're just kind of weighing your options at this point in time as what to do? Yes, ma'am. Any questions for Chief Miller? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Here we have no unfinished business. The first item under new business is um, the fire department headquarter owner items. Okay. So we'd like to request that the authorized funding uh, significantly to install key card access at the fire station or new fire headquarters and to authorize funding for the relocation of the IT equipment from our current station to the new station. Yeah, so if I could piggyback off of that. So essentially what we have is we've got a small but growing list of owner's items, items that were either deducted out of the initial construction contract or were items that were thought to be uh, done at a later point when it got closer to those times. So these are unbudgeted items, but necessary items for the completion of the station. Um, one is, as the chief mentioned, moving the IT equipment over. We haven't received our quote on that yet, so we don't quite know what that final figure looks like, but we did get our quote back on the key card access system, and that's looking to be about $45,000. Um, and so that is a bit pricier than we had anticipated. Uh, in talking with our finance director, uh, um, she had suggested that we earmark 90000 from surplus revenue, which is what we had put in the surplus, surplus revenue recommendation, which we'll be talking about later. Um, but at this time, um, we do have a couple other possible funding opportunities that will end up all rolling up and out. And what I mean by that is we have still some remaining owner contingencies in our contract with uh, the builder. We also have bond proceeds but we won't know exactly how much is left in bond proceeds until we are nearly completed with the project. And then we do have the surplus revenue. So essentially we could end up paying for all this out of what's already been authorized. However, given the size of, of this expenditure, uh, we did want to bring it back to council just to kind of make things one aware and to uh, show that we have a plan on how we address those issues. But after that, we've purchased several items already from um, things that we needed um, Appliances. Appliances, things like that. Like, we yep. had budgeted mm -hmm. some of this. Yep. The, the, I'm going to mess up the name of it. What's it called again? The Ply Movement, Poly Movement? Plime Event. Plime Event. So we've got some equipment that we've already been budgeting for, but they're just every once in a while something pops up that we're like, ah, that got pulled out of the contract. And because of changes in administration, um, just some, some of these things we weren't quite aware of. Or we got quotes and we're preparing for it, but the price has dramatically changed. So. Yes. That also is the update our current system here at City Hall too. Yeah, so so that's actually a slightly yeah. The forty five is for the station plus there's about five thousand because uh, the system's rather old. In order to get the new station online and connected to this system, we have to upgrade the software on the system here. So no no hardware changes, but the software system will be upgraded, and we can handle that through normal budgetary appropriations. But uh, this one was a bit bigger than what. 
Any questions? Mr. Allgood? So that was, was kind of my question that I was gonna ask. So there, there, there's not gonna be any hardware updates in any other facility other than the fire station? Well, the fire station doesn't have the hardware. So right. that, that's, that's the big difference there. So it's, in, it's the physical devices themselves and then the key strikes or the, the strikers for all the doors. I believe it's 11 doors. That's correct. 11 doors um, on the plan, plus then all the electronics that have to get run through the building. And the biggest cost, I think nearly almost half that cost is just labor to install mm -hmm. the system. Because um, that also operates our station three also, the same system here. Mm -hmm. So this, this will ensure that we're all under one system, yep. not two separate systems. Um, but there's not, there's not been a necessity identified to upgrade the hardware here or at any other location just yet. So that's why we haven't looked at that just yet. So that could come down the pipeline? I, I, yes, sir, with all things, absolutely. Um, as we do, we'll put it on the uh, capital improvement plan and address it in a few years or when it's appropriate. We can budget for it. So the ninety thousand dollars up to ninety thousand dollars will get us to where we need to be right now. Yes, that given and the the other um, revenues that we do have in, and we may not even need to touch that ninety, but mm -hmm. we are basically asking for that earmark of from the twenty twenty three uh, surplus plan of that up to ninety thousand just to cover, especially these two known owner items. But these should be the pretty much the last in owner items. The only thing that I could think of is we are transferring quite a bit of equipment from this facility over. So if something gets broken or damaged when we're trying to disassemble it, like our radio towers and things like that, you, there just could, something could pop up. Mr. Braley, thank you. All right, was council's, uh, I mean, committee's pleasure. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion Send to full council the authorization of use of capital funds in the 2023 budget surplus project, uh, projection uh, projection plan in the amount of ninety thousand dollars to install key card access and IT relocation at the new fire station. Thank you, Mr. Carlin. Do I have a second? Second. Second, Mr. Allgood. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Of oh. Yes, sir. Can we add not to exceed? I have no problem with that. Do I need to restate that, or as long as we add it, I'm I, I'm, I'm fully. I understand. <laughs> I wasn't going to go over ninety. <laughs> <laughs> had that, Miss Miller. <laughs> cool. So noted. Yep. All those in favor of forward to full council the request for the um, fire head, fire station headquarters owners item. Say aye. 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 None opposed. Motion carries unanimously. Ms. Chief. All right, the next item, Chief Miller, is our SRO Memorandum of Understanding with Greenville County, which is kind of a housekeeping thing, I think, with the yes, resolution. Yes, ma'am, it's pretty much a uh, copy of last year, except that we do have one from the grant that we just received from the state, and we do have the Urban Juvenile uh, Career Center. So that's, uh, that's basically the same one as last year, except it's added to it. Excellent. I'd like to make a motion. Um, <clears throat> Move to full council uh, that uh, the agreement uh, to accept the or move to full council the agreement with the Greenville uh, County School District for the SRO office. I have a motion to have a second. Second. Second, Mr. Allgood. Any further questions, discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of forward to full council the SRO memorandum of understanding with Greenville County say aye. 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 None opposed. Motion carries unanimously. All right. Thanks, Chief. Back to public comment. Everybody's jumping to get up here. All right. Um, up. Yes, sir. State your name and address, please. David Untoner, 104 Muirwood Drive in uh, Malden, of course, uh, in the Knollwood subdivision. I have no idea, and I apologize if this was the right format for this. I came for a different topic. But uh, two things on safety. One is the Dollar Tree right here down Lawrence Road. The fence around that retaining uh, I don't want to call it a pond, but retaining area it has been broken and been broken for quite a while. Um, that needs to be there and in place. Um, so I'm sorry, again, I don't know if this is the right format to do that, but I would, I don't know if I would call Dollar Tree or exactly how I would get that resolved. 
Um, second point would be I live on Muirwood Drive. Um, in the last year and a half, uh, a property was transferred and uh, at the end of the street. Um, there seems to be a guy running a business down at the end of that street. Um, I've called and several other neighbors have called the code. Um, haven't gotten a whole lot of uh, support and response from there. Um, the it's it's not just I mean it's not just the amount of traffic, but it's it's trucks, it's supplies, it's um, utility vehicles, it's trailers um, going back and forth quite a bit and at alarming speeds down that small dead end street. So uh, you know if there's any information you can give me now that I can call and do more homework on my side, I'd be more than willing to do that. But uh, other than that, I, I thanks for the time for uh, topics that may or may not be related to what you guys are doing right here. Thank you. I can um, get with you after we adjourn. It's not really a Q&A at this point in this format, but um, I'll talk to you afterwards. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Um, committee concerns, Mr. Allgood? Yeah. Um, Mr. Duncan, uh, pertaining to this gentleman, what he just said about Mirwood, I had received a, a similar notification this past Saturday of large trucks traveling down this road with some photography that was taken um, of those trucks going to that that residence. So um, I will send those over to you. Yes, sir. Well. That'd be great. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Any other concerns? Hearing none, what do we have on adjournment? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We stand adjourned at 6.33. Codes up next. Hey, it is 6.35 p.m. on August the 7th, and I will call this BDS committee to order. Is there any public comment? No one online. Okay, hearing none. Um, what do I hear on reading and approval of the minutes? Motion to approve as submitted. Second. All right, any changes? Okay, hearing none. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Let's have it. Um, next is reports or communications from our city officers. Mr. Deerhawk. Good evening, Madam Chair and Council uh, Committee members. Just have a brief report for you tonight. We continue to maintain our uh, normal levels of inspections and permits and such. So no dramatic increases or decreases. To report there, but I will let you know that they have begun building homes in a new subdivision in the city uh, called Chestnut Ridge. So uh, they've pulled their permits for their first set of homes there and begun building. So um, that subdivision is located out between Standing Springs Road and Fork Shoals Road. So uh, you'll see some activity out there for some new homes. Um, also want to report to you that we've had another uh, business permitted out at Bridgeway Station that brings us up to seven businesses that are permit out there. I know there have been additional ones announced um, and they're working through those permits, but the latest one is the is a table 301 restaurant. So we're excited to have that and see that get going. And the last thing I'll report to you on is that uh, we've had a few new business licenses issued this last month, but we had two new ones in the city including the Brandon Dyke guitar teacher over at the Cultural Center, as well as Creative Home Furnishings, which opened up in the old Salvation Army building. That's the report I have for you tonight. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Deerhawk? Okay. Um, next is unfinished business, which we have none, and then we will move on to new business. All right, the first item of new business you have tonight is uh, rezoning. This is actually to expand the commercial zoning at 
the commercial out parcel in front of Arden Woods at the corner or intersection of Fork Shoals Road and Ashmore Bridge Road. Um, there, this corner was already zoned for a commercial, but they wanted to add six acres to that footprint. Uh, and this is to make way for a grocery store that has not been disclosed yet. So um, this went through the planning commission uh, at the end of July and the planning commission recommended unanimously approval of this rezoning. And that is also the recommendation for staff on this. Thank you, Mr. Deer. Any questions? Mr. Alder. Thank you. Is, is the plan here just solely a standalone grocery store or a grocery store with additional? Okay, we do have a representative here, so it, it will have additional things there as well. And it's too early to ask any other questions, I think. So I think that's all I got. Thank you. Mr. Matney, do you have any? No, Madam Chair. All right. Um, my question that uh, Mr. Deerhog answered earlier was just I was confirming that there are no houses that actually back up to this. Uh, there is um, a street that runs in front of um, each of the housing developments there. Um, So, so you well, got the answer that it is not? That's correct. So there will be no homes back up to this. They will be separated by roads and streets. I was just concerned about yeah. maybe a, you know, a grocery store backing up to houses and then you know, the, they come in empty containers and things in the middle of the night or early in the morning. So, okay, we don't have to worry about that. Okay, what do I hear um, in the way of a motion on this one? Move it forward to full council with a recommendation for approval. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none, um, all those in favor say aye. 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 All right, uh, motion carries. Hey, Madam Chair, the next item on your agenda is one that may look familiar to you. Uh, what is being requested is uh, to delay second reading for an annexation that was just recently passed at first reading last month by the City Council. This is the annexation of uh, approximately 16 acres over on Standing Springs Road. If you'll recall, they're going to fold this acreage into an existing residential project, um, not adding any new homes though. And so, uh, the applicant has just requested that you delay the second reading by one month so that they can merge up the closing of the property with second reading so they're closer together. Okay, any questions? Okay, do I hear a motion on this one? Madam Chair, move we hold this until September 18th at the request of the applicant. Second. All right, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. All right, then we had one other item um, that there, there's nothing we need to do on it right now. So um, what do I hear? Is there any public comment? Okay, hearing none, committee concerns. Hearing none, what do we hear on adjournment? So moved. All right. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Right. We're adjourned.
Call the order the uh, Public Works Committee meeting for August 7th. It is 6 45 p.m. Um, I have uh, Ms. Carol King, Mr. Michael Reynolds with me, as well as our city administrator and Mr. Um, Matt Fleeman. All right, uh, let's see here. Public comments. Do we have any public comments? All right, let's go. Oh, and uh, okay, so reading and approval of minutes. Motion to approve as submitted. A motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Chair. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed like signs, the ayes have it. All right, Mr. Fleeman, uh, reports. Thank you, Chairman. <clears throat> um, reports are kind of light this month. Uh, just wanted to indicate that we've gone ahead uh, in accordance with last month's uh, <clears throat> council approval. We've gone ahead and, and, and listed everything on gov deals and we're working our way through selling all the old and used equipment. Uh, we still have a couple pieces that had to be relisted uh, due to technicality. So uh, at next month's uh, council meeting, I have a, a total of how much uh, revenue for the city. <clears throat> um, last week we did have, we did receive the, um, last sidearm trash truck, which we purchased from the 2022-2023 budget. Um, <clears throat> once we finalize all the documents for it, we'll plate it and have that one on the road as well. Uh, for the new 2023-2024, we've already gone ahead and <clears throat> we've ordered the equipment trailer and we've taken ownership of the vibratory asphalt roller and the new mower for the parking lot. Do you anticipate having the sidearm up and running? Um, I mean, it's ready to go. The process um, basically is they deliver a truck, I, I pay them, and then once they receive the money, then they release the title. And so um, the, the whole process usually takes like 10 to 14 days. And so once they release the title, then I get the joy of going back to the DMV um, and, and getting that plated. Let me see, Cal. Um, just one little note here. Um, well, I'll tell you, I'll bring this up at uh, committee concerns. Oh. All right, that's it. Um, all right, any unfinished business? There's none. Or new, yeah, so new business. Stormwater Intergovernmental Agreement. All right, what do you have before you is a, um, a request to uh, authorize the intergovernmental agreement between uh, the stormwater or the stormwater program between the city and Greenville County. Um, we've been operating under an intergovernmental agreement with the county since 2010. It was part of the original NPDES permit. Um, during the last review, which was 2021, US EPA and DHEC felt that the intergovernmental agreement between the parties was more of like a, a 30,000 foot view of the roles and responsibilities of, of the permittees. And they wanted it just in more detail. Um, and so the, the new intergovernmental agreement, there's nothing different it's just it's more descriptive of the roles and responsibilities of the parties um uh, there is no financial impact for this um matter of fact we're doing more than the neighboring cities for the stormwater um, and the public works committee public works department actually uh, recommends that you advance this to city council for full uh, approval and authorization Mr. Fleeman, as I recall, I think I've asked this question before on the same item because it comes up. Is it annually or biannually? The permitting, we have to... Every four years. Okay. Well, it's so supposed it's... to be four years. The last one took a, a, about 13. And I think this is five, isn't it? I believe this is a five-year agreement. Is it a five-year? So. so this this does a more descriptive job of telling the city what they won't use our tax dollars for in stormwater management? Uh, as we've discussed many times, the, the, the stormwater fees that are collected from residents in the city 
go to the administration of the program. Um, the stormwater Permit. permits are not about flooding, it's about stormwater quality. So there's, there's sampling, there's reporting, uh, there's a lot of analytics to it. So yes. So yes. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Chair, I make the motion to forward to full council um, approval of the stormwater intergovernmental agreement. Motion. Second. I have a second. Any discussion? Okay. Those in favor to uh, forward to full council the storm uh, stormwater intergovernmental agreement say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Ayes have it. Moves to full council. All right, Jenkins Street scaping funding appropriations. That one's me, <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Um, so as we spoke about earlier, uh, with regards to the Jenkins Street uh, streetscaping project, we do need to appropriate additional funding for the completion of the uh, the uh, GLDTC project agreement 586 which require or committed us to the, um, the overrun of anything beyond the initial scope of the project. It committed us to the right-of-way acquisition as well as some other items, but in particular, as it relates to the construction, traffic design, preliminary engineering, CEI, and then the right-of-way, we're looking at a total expense of $3,671,248.50. We've already, or we will be securing or having access to 1.359 million in C funds, and we've already committed uh, 780,000 in capital fund for Streetscape One, which is a total of 2,139,675. That leaves a balance there of uh, about 1.531 million in order for us to complete the streetscaping project. Uh, staff proposes utilizing unassigned capital fund fund balance in the amount of one million five hundred thirty-one thousand five hundred seventy-three to complete the streetscaping portion of the project. As of October twenty twenty-two, the unassigned capital fund had a balance of a little over three point five million. Uh, as staff closes out FY twenty twenty-three, it is projected that the additional funds will be placed into the unassigned capital fund balance, growing that balance to twenty five million. <coughs> I just had a, um, so we discussed this earlier. Essentially, we'd already planned uh, for about 1.3 million. We expected it just this is about 200,000 more than we expected for this. So there's still more to come. Yeah, the, the original projection for construction, yes, sir, was about 2.7 uh, million. Uh, the bid did come in higher, and the lowest bid was 2.9 million. Um, we didn't have a figure early on for the right-of-way acquisition. We actually came in under budget for right-of-way acquisition. Uh, we had initially had uh, been reported around 344,000 were what the appraisals came back. Uh, we actually got, uh, completed that process for only about 147,000. So, um, but the overall funding, um, yes, we have committed to all of the anything above and beyond the grant match, which was at 1.3 million. Uh, and in previous fiscal years, we'd only had appropriated 780,000. Um, and so now it would be us appropriating those funds to complete the project. Motion. Well, um, what are your suggestions on where to find 1.5 million? Yeah, so in speaking with Ms. Abercrombie, we said capital fund fund balance. Okay. Um, which is where we generally dump everything yeah. anyway. And um, that's where it was. Um, we we could pull a little bit off of, we have a very healthy H&A balance right now. We could pull some from H&A if we needed to, but at this point in time, um, that recommendation is just capital fund fund balance. And, and this is just strictly, excuse me, a housekeeping thing for me. Um, as we're looking at appropriating something like this, should we not afford this through finance and policy? Is it? That's where it gets a little interesting because I could have put it, I think we could have logically put it through three different committees. Mm -hmm. um, we went with uh, public uh, works simply because it's a road construction project. Okay. Um, but you're right, we, we actually went back. It's, it's also the best committee. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't like to break into Mr. Fleeman because he's right more times than he's not. So I won't, I won't just uh, agree with that. Um, so, but uh, it, it did say we actually went back to the standing committee rules to kind of look through this to see which it made sense for. And it said matters related to streets, drainage, sanitation, uh, construction and maintenance of city owned buildings and grounds. So that, that's how it ended up here. But yes, sir, you're correct. We could have put that into a couple of different ones. So. Motion. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to go ahead and make a motion to uh, appropriate additional funding of $1.531573 million from capital fund balance for the streetscape project located at Jenkins Street and Jenkins Court. Uh, this is in accordance with the GLDTC project agreement 586. I'd like to make a motion to send that to full council with a recommendation of approval. Make a motion to have a second. Second. A second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those like sign, the ayes have it. Move to full uh, council. Uh, the next uh, item on your agenda is authorization is requested to approve amendment five to the agreement between uh, City Malden and Fraser Engineering, now CHA Consulting. As you're aware, uh, the city put in an award and was awarded uh, four mil a $4 million grant for sewer rehabilitation and uh, for our basins RG3, uh, RG2 and basin three. Uh, we've been working with Fraser Engineering, now CHA for uh, 15 plus years. Uh, as part of the, the grant proposal, uh, the, the, the city allocated $300,000 from rehab last year, $300,000 for rehab this year, which is already in the budget. That's our municipal match uh, for the $4 million grant. Of that, uh, $420,000 will be paid for consulting, 180 will go towards general construction. So there is no additional financial hit to this amendment of the contract. This just allows Fraser Engineering, now CHA, to provide the engineering services for a $4 million grant a sewer rehab project. My recommendation is that you advance it to council and sign. Motion. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'll make the motion to forward to full council the um, request to approve amendment five for the sewer rehabilitation program. Motion to have a second. Second. Second, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those like sign, as have it, move to full council. All right, public comments. With slideshow. Thank you, Mr. Craling. Thank you, committee members. Uh, Brian Patton, 123 Kingsley Drive, Mountain, South Carolina. Uh, just so we're all on the same page, bring everybody up to speed. I spoke at the February or the March public comment where I talked about the collapsed stormwater pipes behind basically Papa's and Beer. Uh, Mr. Duncan arranged a meeting with the mayor and Mr. Fleeman. We went back toward the property. I think there was an agreement that that was a serious problem. Um, Mr. Duncan had a meeting with SCDOT where they said that basically, I'm correct right if I'm wrong, sir, that uh, while the stormwater pipes did belong to SCDOT, there had been no infrastructural change in over 32 years. They hadn't widened 276. That should have contributed to that system failing. Uh, in the spirit of good faith, they would be willing to work with the city of Malden to come up with a, like a, a this is how we can move forward or whoever could move forward. Um, but they felt that it was ultimately the property owner's responsibility. At last month, I talked to numerous state agencies and other folks. Um, there's a lot of finger pointing. <laughs> it's Malden. Malden says it's not us, it's SCDOTS. 
I read through this new intergovernmental agreement, and I was hoping that we could have unpacked that a little bit more at tonight's meeting. Maybe we could have a meeting later, open some of this up to find out who is actually responsible for what. Um, the pond 116 Mirrorwood at the end is being destroyed. You could put that first slide up, sir. Thank you. I'm, I apologize for the, the graininess. This is a, a website that, that puts high definition pictures unless you go back. So this picture in the top right corner was from uh, July of 2017. Um, the red outlined property is Mr. and Mrs. Vines. They live at the end of lock, but it's the same. What we're looking at is the pond. Um, pond looks strikingly similar. There are two other ponds, one to the left and one at the 11 o'clock position. Uh, that was 2017 before the Novo apartments and before Dollar Tree was put on the stormwater, that stormwater strain. We can go to the next one. And this is just gonna go annually. Uh, next slide will be 2018. They're, they're all still, I think they're all still ponds or still, still same color. Yeah, please. So that one there, 20, 2019. Start to see a little bit of sediment on the bottom the five o'clock position of the pond. Uh, um, you also notice it's starting to change. I think this is about the time they started the Dollar Tree. That's okay. That's all right. That's the virus up around the corner. <laughs> so that's 2020. I think we can all agree there is a striking change in the appearance of the pond. Um, you can also note, did you, did you minimize that for one second? I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Look at the very top 12 and one o'clock position. You can see the sediment starting to creep in. It's tan. Now, like I said, I apologize. The, the, an up-to-date image is high quality. You can see the sediment starting at the, between the six and seven o'clock position on the bottom. That was, uh, what, 2020? So you can see the sediment now, and we'll still compare that to the other pond. I have a high def picture of this too. That's a high definition picture. If you could zoom in, that is the pond is completely filled in with sediment. Now you can compare the pond to the left takes all the storm water from West Butler. There is no, I mean, it's a clear pond. That pond was what? Six, seven, eight feet deep. It's 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 eight inches deep now. This is six ponds within a half mile of that pond. The other five look strikingly clear and like ponds. think this one should be the that's the house on the corner of Knollwood and Mirwood. Um Kings, yeah, Kingsley and Mirwood, I'm sorry. I've lived there 22 years. In the last 15 years, the water went across that was the first thing we the water went across that three times. It now does it with the face of the box. The sediment and the pipe is about half the full of sediment. Under the ocean is fucking up. This next one is where the creek comes down. Is that's creek color. I mean creek color. You'll see where the, that's where the pond from the collapsed stormwater pipe ties in. Oh yeah, this is a good one. This is the neighbors from Kingsley and Mirwood. This is his child's bicycle floating in their backyard. 
if the, if the child would get out in that water, they're dead. It's going to kill them. That's Wow's uh, asphalt they left at the gentleman's property. Did thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I've asked who proposed development, the townhomes, and the truest bank. Who checks the box that says that the stormwater is adequate? Is it somebody sitting in an, in an office looking at a 20 year old map? Because obviously they're not walking out there and seeing the, the collapsed piping that I showed you guys in the first meeting. They are not seeing this. I just um, was hoping that maybe we could work with business development, Greenville County, somebody to get these pipes fixed before we add further damage to it by, by developing the properties or ask the proposed future property owners, would they be willing to take this on, make these repairs? As you know, we, this is not a question. I, I understand. So just everyone else here is there aware of that. Uh, we can discuss this after. Uh, this is actually some pretty good video. Um, I want to say something, but I can't. I know. I understand. So I appreciate you uh, coming. I think I see you coming back home. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Anyone else for public comments? Yes, sir. Thank you. 116. Mr. Duncan, there is actually a report that the Water Review Board has issued to navigate the board and make sure that we're correct in our assumptions. Sorry, <laughs> glasses. <laughs> I have some images and I have some videos. Um, piggybacking a bit on what Ryan had just shared with us. Well, in any case, we can click on. Okay, perfect. Our pond is not the pond that um, we loved and enjoyed when we first moved into this house four years ago. The change has been drastic. And when Dollar Tree and the apartments um, were being constructed, I know they do the silt fences, but you can see in a rainstorm, all of that came down through into the stormwater. Didn't help that the This is a video and illustrated by Mr. Cabello and Ms. Constantino. Um, I'm sure it's going to come back up in the next couple of slides. If not, <laughs> yeah, if it's easier just to escape, if you want to escape the cloudy sky, you can just go right down to Hill Pine and then come right on down. So these are the it being separate separately. You can go right down. There's a road. 
do that. It could just be some things that maybe he was like, I know that this one thing is going to never work. Six times a year, it comes back to bite him more severely than the other cancer. And then he might get another thing coming on the opposite side of it um, from flu. And the mud, it's, just, it's unbelievable the, the amount of mud and silt that's just on the rocks and the walls of his house. So he was a typical father. Two years ago, he was really starting to get sick. We have another friend who came from Butler County. You can see the doctor that was on the front door of his home for the last three or four months. And then on the right side of his home, you can see the little shop where that one tree that was just down the side of my house. seeing the direction of the snow and the water and the fact that he had to be So here's a worm that runs down here and now they get this storm on the opposite side of the property. It runs in here and it continues to climb in here and gets into the ground from up in here where they build them high so I'm planning to do the um, construction, the runoff of the river system. It's on that that video for you. This is, I think, the most impressive view that we have of this whole thing. And he is night and day. This is at the corner of Kingsley and Muirwood, making its way down to our pond. And this is a pop-up shower. So this has already started to fill up. This is the view from my front window. That was running water from the ground. Silt started to build up, and that was two years ago. So it's kind of like that's what we saw in the video. It was completely grown up, and we were planning to do this construction Saturday. We were looking at like tens of thousands of dollars to try to get this stuff on, and he said, "I wouldn't do it. This is just going to keep coming. The amount of silt, sediment, the volume of silt." Said, and he didn't want to have to come up and get rid of it. And our property manager, along with all of the neighbors along Muirwood, um, all of their yards are being filled with silt and they didn't want to come up and also share some of that with us. So we're pretty much heartbroken. The value of our property is going to, you know, down and uh, we don't know what else to do. And to say that those broken pipes and everything that's happening is just natural erosion, it, how can that be? When every other stream that runs into that pond is clear, it just doesn't make any sense. And to say it's a private property owner matter, no. Anyway, thank you for your time. Thank you. Say your name again. David Untener, 104 Muirwood, uh, up the up the street from Lisa. Um, I'll try to be quick. Um, perfect timing for this meeting. Drove by Dollar Tree on the way in this morning or this this evening during the torrential downpour. The little retention pond thing in there had about a foot of water. That thing's about six foot deep. Uh, to the discussion of who is planning this stuff. Obviously, they're not planning well. And they're not following up on the plan because that wa that should have water in it with the torrential rain we just had this evening. Um, the creeks were today looking like the videos you saw. Um, so obviously they're not planning properly and they're not checking up on their work either. Um, so we definitely need to to push. And I know I understand Greenville County is responsible for a lot of this, um, but we need a little bit of help from the city of Malden to help push this with us. Um, because random calls to the county aren't aren't working out, um, you know. So again, you know, 
the, the development. Aldi seems to be okay. The Dollar Tree is where a lot of it's coming from. The new apartments that they're building uh, right now just uh, um, down the road um, is also on the high side of that. So we're going to get a lot of that water too. So uh, really concerned with that. And then the uh, used car dealership, that, uh, that fell through apparently. Um, the one that they were going to build some townhomes and restaurants there, but that would also feed into uh, feed into that area too. So, um, you know, we need some help for the mistakes done in the past, and we need some help to prevent those same mistakes happening in the future. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I'm Bill Snyder, one sixteen Muirwood Drive. Just a couple of thoughts on all of this. Uh, when we were doing a lot of this uh, about three years ago, when the mud was just terrible, uh, one of the people that we talked to was someone from DHEC. And I talked to that person on the phone, and that person was supposed to come and meet with me and come and look at our pond and, and talk about things. Didn't show up, so I thought, okay, let me try calling them again, waited a few weeks talked to them and they said, yeah, I came, didn't come to the house, didn't come and see me, didn't come and look at the pond. She walked around and looked at the creeks and her determination was all of this that was coming into our pond was natural erosion. And my reverse theory on this is if you take all of the mud and silt in our pond, it wasn't there before and you back it up and you stick it back in the creeks as she thought it was coming from. I would think those creeks would be very much full of mud and overflowing with mud, but that was her theory. Now, another theory is um, that pond's been there for 45 years. If this is natural erosion and all, uh, most of this has occurred just in the last few years, but that pond's been there for 45 years. Why isn't that pond like a small mountain of mud? If it's been filling up with natural erosion for 45 years, where is all the mud? Why did it just happen in this short period of time? What happened 10, 20, 30, 40 years ago? What happened to all of that natural erosion? It just didn't happen. I, that, that, does, that theory doesn't make any sense to me. All right, move on to committee concerns. <clears throat> oh, so, hold on one second. On this, I have a, actually, I have a question, Matt. You can probably answer. Um, the hundred. I'm going by memory, so it gets a little sideways. We had the evaluation of the different stormwater projects. We was one hundred ninety-eight thousand dollars. That was for the bottom of um, of uh, Kingsley and Mirwood right there. Is that correct? There was one for a project for Knollwood, wasn't that it? It was. Um, forgive me, I pulled the address. It's it's right where uh, Edgewood comes across Knollwood. Um, no, it was. Get that address. So it wasn't that though. Okay. So it was looking at um, 417 Knollwood. The, they sit at the base of Edgewood Drive. And you know, the. Comes straight down sometimes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, you were going to say something else and I continue. Or you came up, or you just came up to answer questions. Committee concerns. Okay, committee concerns. Okay, Generally just checking. Question. But you just looked like you're determined. Um, so we've had some discussion here about stormwater. We've looked at a lot, and actually, since you sent this here, this actually gives me a different view. I think of what's going on. I'm gonna stay in public. We'll talk to you afterwards. Um, the just to for some there was some been some you know, discussion here uh, to understand what 
the designs do when you design an area is to retain the water, to slow the water down. So it's supposed to be the same, what's naturally there. I've actually looked at a number of drawings. Usually they exceed that. If you take a look at the, the apartment complex on the other side of, um, of Knollwood, they were doing that, they were building and they had a mud start coming down and as it was coming down, I actually was involved. I did call, get in contact with the actual CEO of the business that was doing the construction and basically told him that uh, that the landowner behind him was about to file, uh, put injunctions in place, which would affect their liquidated damages, cost them a lot of money. Let's fix it. And they did. When something's going on, when it, so if we do additional construction, if we do a different thing, we can address it while it's going on if we know it's going on. In this case, I think we just missed it because timing wise, the construction's already passed. So there's not a whole lot we can do there unless I misunderstand something. However, looking at this to stormwater, we are looking at across the entire city stormwater and how to pay to, re to resolve a lot of issues like this. Um, and it's in the, by tens of millions of dollars. Uh, we did do, we did agree to an agreement recently, like 1.1, we had to put up 1.1 million, another, uh, we got federal matching funds of 1. 1.1 million for, uh, over at Springfield Park for the stormwater over there. There's a lot there. We are looking at stormwater. Fortunately, we move at the, the the pace of government. It takes a long time to get a lot of this stuff done, but we are actually moving there. We did get some good results from the curbing that um, Matt's team has been doing, and it's, it's really helped. Um, fortunately, one of the little areas right uh, near uh, where I live, somebody ran into it and broke it. They're actually working on a few extra feet and you have the concrete may want to come patch it. But if somebody hit it with a car, probably saved their car, to be honest, because it would have went in a big ditch. Uh, it was like two days after you did it, but that's working well to improve things. It's not going to fix stuff, but it's going to make it better. So we as a council, we are really working hard to try and do this, really trying to figure out where we're going to pay for this and how we're going to pay for it. There is no funding mechanism. And there's an always argument, it's county, it's state, it's this. At the end of the day, everybody everybody's saying it's not mine and we're trying to we're trying to do what we can do uh, so that's kind of where we stand my concern is now now to see this i think i have a better idea and i want to have, have more discussions outside of this but i want to thank everybody who came in to show that that actually was very educational thank you mr chairman just to piggyback that i wish you guys were the only story that we've had here uh, in council with pictures and videos because it's it's a frustrating thing for us um, to to Mr. Crayling's point is to also feel helpless, and, and it seems the only thing we can do is throw dollars at it, and that's not always the the best way to handle this stuff. So certainly, just be mindful that the council as a whole, to Mr. Crayling's point, is working hard to see the problem and 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 allocate resources that that will help fix it, um, both short term and long term. So, but thank you for coming in and sharing it because without it, we we wouldn't know otherwise. Just, just one more point on this. Also, we've gotten plans. This was not one of the plans that uh, we had the engineering firm look at, by the way. We've had plans across the city for different areas, and I've even gone through the actual engineering, what their plans were for, to sum up what it was going to cost. And I really couldn't even shave a whole lot of money off of what they were asking for. A lot of stuff was the correct way of doing things. It's, I think it was total was $7.7 .7 if I'm remember correctly so just depending the could they presented options for each one yes yeah so like that's more on the low end <laughs> yes and, and the low ends like i said i went through the i went through the whole project i went through uh went through them and really i said well what if we did this i'm looking at maybe we could shave a couple thousand it was not it was not anything substantial so just please thank you that's the only th thank you mr chair um mr Fleeman. so the projects that Mr. Kraling's referring to, aren't there five total projects that were identified? Is that correct? Or six? Six. Six, six different okay. basins. Just to give you guys an idea of the six areas that were identified by this firm that came in to help us get a better understanding of the problems across the city. Um, so... Really, we really can't answer two questions. It goes against what we're supposed to do. You can hold those until afterwards, and we're more than happy to sit here, but it, it, it's just we have to follow protocol. I'm sorry. All right, any more questions from council? No, Mr. Chairman. No. 
Thank you, everyone. All right. Um, what do I hear on adjournment? So Second. moved. Second. Second. <laughs> All those in favor, any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Ayes have it. We are adjourned. Uh, up next, we have finance and policy. Ms. Kuznar. Oh, you were back there the whole time. Are you ready? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and call this finance and policy committee meeting to order. The date is August 7th. The time is 725. Members present are myself, Ms. Carol King, Ms. Diane Kuznar, our finance director, Ms. Holly Abercrombie, our city administrator, Mr. Seth Duncan, um, as well as our HR director, Mr. Mark Putnam and various audience members. Um, first order is called to order. Second is gonna be public comment. This will be for items that are on the Finance and Policy Committee agenda. If there's any questions or comments that would like to be shared with this committee, now would be the time to do it. Thank you. Good evening. Um, my name is Bo Brogdon. I'm an attorney at Campbell Teague. I've been in front of you before, I think a few months ago. I'm here on behalf of uh, Keller Williams Greenville Central, my client. Todd Corhide is also here with me as well as a representative. We're here tonight um, uh, for the committee to consider upon recommendation by the city attorney, Daniel Hughes, um, to request that the committee forward to the full council a request for Keller Williams Greenville Central to waive the late fees that has been imposed for the 2023 business license tax. Um, the late fees as of July, um, when this letter was presented to me by Mr. Hughes, equated to $3,101.53. Um, I'll be forthright with the committee that the committee or that the city of Malden has a ordinance in place that, were, that mandates um, that that uh, late fees cannot be waived unless they're approved by council. And so that's why we're here tonight, basically asking you if you would do that for us. There's a few reasons for that. I'm sure Mr. Korahai will get into that here very briefly. Um, but for your information, part of our request revolves around a previous appeal that my client made of the 2022 business license tax that was it was imposed on it. Um, and that hearing that we had in front of full city council occurred on May 1st. And as committee may know, that was kind of the date around when the business license tax needed to be paid. So as a result, because we did not pay it on the first, it then started to accrue late fees until Mr. Hughes got back to me almost two months later um, with a late fee charge of $3,101.53. My client's fully prepared to pay that and will pay it under protest like we have done previously. Um, but that's why we're here tonight to request that the committee for that to council for a request to, to waive those late fees um, and so that we can continue to move forward processing the application. But this time I'll turn it over to Mr. Corey to say a few words. Good evening, members of council. Thank you for hearing me. Um, during our last meeting, it was accurate, accurately uh, reported by Mr. Gerhardt that going back to 2009 that we've always paid our our licensing fees. There's never been any issue. There's never been any challenges. Keller Williams was started in 1983 by Gary Keller and Joe Williams, and they put in print, God first family, then business. And our adage is render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and give unto God what is God's. So we don't have any problem paying the late fees. And Mr. Gerhardt accurately portrayed that since 2009, never been any issues. But what wasn't reported was we opened our doors not in 2009. That's when we moved to Malden. We opened our doors in 2007 in Simpsonville. And when we opened our doors um, in Simpsonville, we made a choice to move to Malden in 2009. Now, things were good for us in Simpsonville. We won what's called the Home Run Launch Award inside of Keller Williams. We were the number 12 new startup in all of Keller Williams. We were competing in number two in North and South Carolina, competing against offices in New York, California, Texas, Florida, and other major metropolitan areas. And for your amusement, I'll tell you that when I walked the stage at our convention, 
uh, even though everyone in the audience applauded, they had no idea where Simpsonville, South Carolina was. They didn't register in anyone's brain because they didn't say the, the state, they just said the municipality. That being the case, the audience had never heard of it. But nonetheless, even though things were good, I decided to move my business to Malden, and there's a reason why for that. You see, in 2009, my two boys, one was at Malden Elementary and one was at Malden Middle. And today, my boys both graduated Malden High School, not this day, but my boys have both graduated Malden High School. One is graduating Clemson, the other one will graduate Clemson this Friday. My wife graduated Malden High School, her sister graduated Malden High School, and her three kids all graduated Malden High School. But it goes beyond that. Why did we move to Malden? Because beyond that, my father-in-law emigrated to the United States in 1975 and set up shop in Malden, and he opened a business in 1980. It's called the Great Wall. Perhaps you've heard of it. Famous for its egg rolls all around the United States. People coming from Piedmont, Powdersville, Spartanburg, the other side of Gaffney, just to hear some guy come out and talk to them in Korean. They're not sure what he said, but they knew the egg rolls were really good. And now that it's a generational choice that I chose to come to Malden, I have to let you know that for 43 years, my family has served this community intergenerationally. Now, my father-in-law closed his business on March 31st after 43 years of faithful service, and my boys are going to be moving on, and my ties to this community are starting to fade, and that should concern you. It could, should, should concern you deeply because the South Carolina legislature passed a law to make sure that brokerages were not taxed against their gross receipts. So I'm going to ask you a question. I understand you may not be able to answer. But the good citizens of Malden, I'll let you answer if you like. I am taxed as if my revenue is $17 million a year, and it's not even one-tenth of that. Now, let me ask you a question. If you were taxed, if you earned $140,000 a year, and you, and you were taxed as if you were earning $1.5 million a year, you might take issue with that. And, well, you should, because that would be unjust. And that's why the, the, the state legislature and every other municipality in the state has decided that this law has to change and that businesses should be taxed according to their revenue, not according to their gross receipts. Unfortunately, it didn't go out that, it didn't happen that way. And I have to ask another question. If the flat screen TV you wanted was available for $2,000 here in this town, and $300, the same flat screen, in the, flat screen in the next town over, my hunch is you would make the drive. So let me share with you why I'm considering moving my business back to Simpsonville. Because at our last meeting, you all had a chance to reach out to me and talk to me about it, but no one did. See, I tutored under a guy named Jim DeMint, and he taught me about constituent services. And I was an intern for Strom Thurmond, and he taught me about constituent services. And I received none. No one reached out. And I heard the encouragement you gave committee members tonight for doing a great job, but not one person said, hey, thanks for putting your business here in Malden. We appreciate you. You see, that business down the street, on average, we service 2,000 clients a year representing over a half a billion dollars in real estate sales. Now, you may not know this, but two-thirds of an agent's sales are either five miles from their home or five miles from their business on average because those are the communities they know. And the economic development of each home sale in a community represents somewhere between thirty dollars to $50,000 when you consider appraisers, closing attorneys, paralegals, uh, claims adjusters, when you consider that for, a for insurance, loan officers, I could go on and on. So tonight, I'm sitting here asking myself, do I want to stay in a community where it feels adversarial? Because my last meeting here felt very adversarial. The city attorney asked you to return a verdict against my business without asking you just to make an independent decision. He asked you to return a vote against a business that's part of this community and has been for 14 years. By choice, I could have stayed in Simpsonville. I chose to move my business back here. So you can imagine, yeah, I'm a little disappointed and I'm not afraid to tell you that. See, I'm the consumer and I have choices. My choices are gonna be dictated by your choices. So I'm gonna ask you tonight to ignore the city attorney in the future. Go back to city council and make a choice for the city of Malden tonight. Because if 50,000, 30 to $50,000 
of economic development per home sale is pulled out of this community. And my office represents a thousand buyers, a little over a thousand buyers and just under a thousand sellers. And the majority are in the Golden Strip. That office is one of the 10 biggest offices in the state of South Carolina. And I want you to consider every business from Woodruff Road all the way down. And you ask them, do you want those 1,000 buyers? Oh, by the way, close to half are from out of state. Do you want the local banks not getting that business? Do you want the local restaurants not getting that business? My 200 realtors and their 1,000 buyers who come in every year have a choice, and we have a choice. And the question is, what choice are you going to make? So my first request is, show the common sense to waive these late fees. We've always paid, but I didn't set the date, so I got hit with late fees. The other choice tonight to make is go back to council and stop this. Every municipality I do business with from Gaffney to Lawrence to Greenville to Simpsonville to Spartanburg all sees the law under the new statute. Don't tax a business. Don't tax you as if you make $140,000 and tax you as if you make $1.5 million. That's what you voted against me last time. So here's the choices you have to make. I'm in real estate, I can move my business, it's not hard, I can do it. I don't want to, I love this community, I'm loyal to this community. My kids love this community too. My family's been here back to 1975. So I know it's a little bit of a drawn out emotional speech, but let me get to the logical part of it. My business processes, I'd much rather save the $100,000 over the next five years I'm moving my business and going back to Simpsonville. Don't want to, but that's the logical choice. Just like you would make the drive to save the thousands of dollars on the flat screen TV I told you about. So think hard. Go back and talk to the other members of council and let them know we want to vote for Malden. We want to vote because if I lose, you lose more. We typically give three minutes. I'd let a lot more go on, but can we wrap it up really quickly, please? Close it. Thank you for your kindness. I appreciate it. Number one, drop my, by my business and let's have a cup of coffee and talk and demonstrate some constituent services, please. I got a nice big building. I was glad to do it there. Glad to do it. I'm wrapping it up. Number two, recognize that if I win in this, I'll win tens of thousands. You'll win tens of millions. If I lose tens of thousands, I move and you still lose the licensing fees and the tens of millions. So vote for Malden. Vote for what's best for this community. Change this and this nonsense. I don't want to go to the administrative law court, but that's our next step. Your city attorney said that's the next step. I don't want to do it, but we will if we have to. So please go back, vote for Malden. Recognize I win this much, you win this much. I win tens of thousands, you win tens of millions in economic development. I lose tens of thousands, I move and you still lose tens of millions in economic development. Make the right decision, please. Thank you. Thank you for coming out. Do we have any more public comment for this committee or, or agenda items on our agenda? All right. Moving on, we have reading and approval of minutes. These are for the Finance Committee minutes dated June 5th, 2023. What do I hear? Motion to approve as submitted. Second. Thank you, Ms. King. I have a motion and a second by Ms. Kuznar. Uh, any discussion? I'm sorry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Carries unanimous. Thank you. All right. Next item is going to be reports and communications from our city officers. Mr. Duncan, you are up first, please. Thank you, sir. You've heard a lot from me tonight, so I'll keep it brief. <laughs> so, uh, just a couple of quick items. One, uh, we're set to honor two uh, retirees, one that's retiring soon and one that's re just retired this past month at the August meeting. And so we're really excited to have uh, both of those individuals uh, present for that. Um, and also just reminder, school starts tomorrow. So slow down in, in school zones, watch out for kids, watch out for buses. We're excited about that. And last thing is we are currently working on our generator that services City Hall and more importantly, the police department, police dispatch. Uh, it did fail last week when it was supposed to come on. We did have some electrical outages in this area. Uh, from what I heard this afternoon is that we've got to order a part for it. So hopefully it'll be in by the end of this week and then there shouldn't be any problems with the generator there. Uh, but just wanted to give you all a quick update. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Duncan. Next up, we have Ms. Holly Abercrombie, our finance director. Thank 
Good evening, members of the committee. I don't really have anything to report on as we're in the new fiscal year, um, you know, and we're just fresh into it, kind of, so everything looks pretty good right now. And then, um, of course, later on, we will talk about the um, memo that was sent out, um, the projections of last year's um, preliminary unaudited numbers. I don't know why she air quoted that, but <laughs> thank you, Ms. Abercrombie. Uh, next up is Mr. Putnam, our human resources director. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, committee. Uh, this month begins, or we begin this month with our evaluation process for all employees. Uh, that'll continue through September. We'll actually do most of the um, right, most of the evaluations this month. We'll review them next month and then begin reviewing those with the employees late September. And they'll uh, see those in their checks the first check of October. Uh, we are also, <clears throat> as Chief Miller um, uh, talked about in the public safety, we are working with departments now to come up with ways and, and, and policies and procedures that we can begin to curb some of the accidents with vehicles that we've had. And so we'll have more to report to you guys uh, in September uh, with all of that. So. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Putnam. Quick comment on that. I appreciate you being involved when talking, having um, end users of fire trucks, police cars, or whatever, get together and talk about how we can change our policy to, to help them. So I appreciate you being involved in that and then obviously helping coordinate that as well. So uh, I wanted to comment on that before you took off. Do we have any questions, comments, concerns for Mr. Putnam? All right, hearing none. Let's move on to unfinished business to which we have none. Uh, we'll move on to new business. First item up is gonna be Keller Williams Real Estate Business License Late Fee. This is in your packet. We obviously had public comment on this earlier. Overview is in there. Um, what do I hear? If we'd like to have staff comment, Mr. Duncan. Yes, sir. We have uh, uh, Mr. Gerhard is going to speak to this. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. It's got your name on it, right? Good evening, Chairman and committee members. Uh, not really much for me to. Add, they gave you a pretty good overview. Um, we, this has been brought on because they presented a letter addressed to Mr. Duncan. Uh, the city's legal counsel did provide a response to um, Keller Williams legal counsel, Mr. Brogdon, and informed them that they, Keller Williams, have incorrectly calculated their 2023 business license tax amount due uh, due to their gross sales being significantly underreported, the amount required for payment under protest must be at least 80% of the amount due, and they haven't met that threshold, is what Mr. Hughes communicated. Um, they further notified them that the failure to pay the full amount due under protest could ultimately affect the late fees owed if their current appeal fails. But uh, what you're reviewing tonight is their request to lay waive the late fees for their 2023 business license, they've been informed that only city council can really des can decide to grant such a request. So that's what you have before you. Um, you're the, according to your standing committee rules, the options at your disposal are to disapprove of any action being taken on the matter, report on the matter with any amendments for action by city council at a council meeting, for action pending further review, or for the matter to another committee. Mr. Gerhard, questions, comments, concerns from committee members? Yes, Ms. King. No, you're surprised. <laughs> um, so I know the cities that I'm familiar with um, in the state do not allow um, a part payment per se. So um, I, I guess what I'm saying, the 80% 
when was Keller Williams given the figure of the 80%? Well, the communication that Mr. Hughes sent to them was dated July 19. And that had the fee along with the penalties, correct? He... I'm They're shaking in. their head yes behind you, so I trust All that right. that's correct. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So um, hypothetically speaking, prior to July 19th, if Keller Williams submitted a payment less than the 80%, then would we return that payment or would we keep that payment? We have typically kept the payment as a partial payment okay. because what that does is it just – draws down the amount that they owe so when we do calculate late, late fees you can at least take out that part and not calculate late fees on the part that they've paid okay. and if i understand correctly to date there has been no payment made towards the 2023 business license just that partial payment that we received at the end of june okay for 2023 for 2023 Okay, so there was a partial payment. Did I miss something? Just checking. I guess I don't have any other questions right now, but just um, from my perspective, I um, don't really know where to start. I have a whole page of notes. So to, to address your comments, um, I don't think there's anyone sitting up here tonight that does not value our residents and our businesses in the city of Malden. Having said that, business license that I'm familiar with in municipalities across the state of South Carolina is the one thing that is pretty standardized and is the same across the board. The rates may be different, but the ordinances and the way they're enforced are the same for the most part with the cities that I'm familiar with, which there's a lot that I work with um, in my day job. Um, so all of the cities require you to report and pay business license based off of gross receipts. You are allowed deductions that we, as we discussed last time for taxes paid in other municipalities. Um, so I, I, I guess where I'm going with this is, um, Hypothetically speaking, if you were to move to Simpsonville, to me, the, the, the fee assessed under the ordinance of the state of South Carolina should be based off of gross receipts, what's on line one. And, and I, I, I'm just, no, no sir, because that's a, not the time right now. You can at the end of the meeting um, feel free to. Um, I'm just looking at you directly because I want to, because I'm the one, yeah, so I'll look out elsewhere if that would make you feel more comfortable. Um, so again, in my day job with business license that I submit to municipalities from Oconee County all the way down to Georgetown, Horry County, um, most of them require proof of sales, which is that partnership tax return or their corporate tax return or their schedule C if it's on their personal and whatever those gross receipts are, unless I can provide proof that they pay tax to other municipalities, then that's what they pay their business license tax on. Um, again, I'm just speaking for the 400 people that I do business license for. Um, if a tax return is required by that municipality, it's on gross receipts unless you have those deductions. Um, in the last couple of years, a lot of municipalities are now requiring that proof of sales, whereas in the past they have not. Um, another point that I wanted to make um, was, again, Malden's not different from other municipalities in that city council are the only body that can waive penalties. Um, I have dealt with other municipalities across the state and it has been the exact same ordinance. Um, staff cannot waive penalties only the council of that municipality can. So that's not unique to the city of Malden. Um, you know, until the way I read this, until the ordinance is clarified and changed or the state legislators make their change, it's, it's pretty clear to me that 
business license are based on gross receipts. And we cannot issue business license to your agents. So therefore, there's no way to take that deduction per se. And I guess the only analogy I can come up with is if I'm doing a bathroom remodel at my house and I have a contractor that's at my house working, he brings in subcontractors. Well, guess what? Every individual has to have a business license with the city of Malden. Um, my main guy and all the sub guys under him. So that might be a bad analogy, but that's kind of where I'm looking at it in, in, in your profession as well. So um, I guess that's all I have for now. I might think of something later. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. King. Ms. Kunar, Kuznar, any thoughts or comments? Well, the, the only thought that came to my mind is we never did hear back as to what the legislator meant by that. And I think that that was something that Maybe our attorneys were going to look into. We were waiting to hear back. Um, so that that's kind of still my question is what was meant by what has been written? Okay. Um, so what I've got is we've got a request here. Some thoughts, comments, uh, Ms. King. I would follow up with you know from my background also. It, it's a it's an interesting thing that when so I'm in residential building. So if I go and want to build a million dollar house, I have to file that permit for a million dollar house. Then every subcontractor that works for me has to go and file how much his portion of that policy is. Now that doesn't apply here, but certainly that's as I look at it, that's where I understand your frustration. So for me, I look at it and go, you know, it'd be great if only I had to absorb that cost. Um, so I can understand how there's some validity to confusion and often what happens when legislators write laws that have little words and T's and I's dotted and commas and semicolons, stuff like this comes up. So I can appreciate the confusion there. Uh, what we've got before us though is this committee is going to make a decision on what are we going to do with it. We have to either forward it to full council with no recommendation, um, send it to another committee. What's with this particular item, the request to waive late fees for Keller Williams? Mr. Duncan, what will be the procedure if this, if no motion is made to forward this? If there's no motion, sir, we would just continue the next item of business. Although, if you do want to put a bow on it, and you have disapprove of any action, you can do a motion to deny. Report on the matter, a motion to move or advance forward to council. Defer, motion to table. Uh, pending further review or afford the matter to another committee. Motion to table. As I think about this, one of the, I think is the, the rules would state that council has the sole authority. So as I look at that to, to, to refund um, late penalty fees, um, would it be the proper role of this committee to, as we don't represent the entire council? That's where I would go back to the standing rules of the committees, which is adopted by city council. It empowers the committees to act in certain matters. Um, and so I think it could be explained that the committee does have the authority to address this directly, but if, um, but that's more of a legal question than, than anything. Ms. Kuznar has a question. Thank you, Mr. Kuzner. Um, so, Mr. Deerhog, you said that only half has been paid, half of 2023. A portion. And there are late fees on the remaining unpaid portion. So, it comes back to a difference of interpretation on what constitutes the gross 
receipts that they should be reporting on their renewal application. And this is the hearing that we had mm -hmm. earlier this year about. And that was so for 2022, correct? That hearing was for 2022. So for this 2023 license, I, from what I can see, they're maintaining their interpretation that they are uh, presenting for how their renewal is being calculated whereas in our interpretation still has been held at the gross receipts that's reported in the tax documentation. So when we talk about how much they've paid and underpaid, it, it's all pointing towards that difference of interpretation. And it's, it's um, significantly less obviously what they've paid based on their interpretation, much less than half of what our interpretation has been held at. So even if we were to waive this late fee and there's still an outstanding portion due, late fees are going to start checking up again until those dues are paid. Yeah, it would almost fall on the council really to, if they want to just get past the issue of late fees to just say something to the effect of we will not apply any late fees until um, we feel more confident about the correct interpretation of the uh, ordinance as applies to this business, something to that effect. I'm, I'm talking out loud. Hopefully it's not too dangerous for me to do that, but that might be, yeah, it, it's, it still is kind of a complicated issue because this is unresolved, right? And so um, when we're talking about late fees, I assume that their request is to late fees, perhaps as it applies in general to this 2023 license, but you may wish to take that request however you wish. Well, just one clarification. I don't think it's unresolved. Um, council said, would it resolve to be our version, our understanding of the ordinance in the hearing, right? We've established what the right. city's interpretation is correct. Okay. Yes, Chairman. The only thing I wanted to add was um, just the timing aspect of it in, in the sense that business licenses are due April 30th, and this was submitted in June, this request. Okay. And so, and then also just as a kind of a, maybe an easier analogy to compare this to is I like to think of it like a car dealership. So the dealership is required to get a business license, but the individual sales agents are not. And in this case, with regards to uh, these types of agents, the state law, my understanding is that the state law uh, doesn't allow individual agents to get a business license or doesn't require them. However, the interpretation that the city's maintained and that the municipal association has maintained is that the brokerage in charge is res responsible, just like a car dealership would be responsible for its business license and for all the sales transactions that occur in that business. Okay. Do I hear any motions on this item? Mr. Reynolds, um, you brought up an excellent point that um, the ordinance reads that it is council as a whole, perhaps, versus committee. Um, and based off of that, um, I think it would um, be in our best interest to um, forward this to full council with no recommendation. So I would like to put that in the form of a motion. If I could also add a caveat that, so does penalty start occurring at the first of the month? It, so it won't start recalculating again until September 1. So no more penalties will accrue between now and our council meeting, correct? I believe so. Okay. Yeah. okay. Then I would make yep. the motion to forward full council um, the request for waiver of late penalties um, from Keller Williams with no recommendation from committee. Thank you, Ms. King. I have a motion on the floor to forward to full council with no recommendation. Um, do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Kuznar. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on this item? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Carries unanimous for two. Or to full council without a recommendation. Thank you, Ms. King, and thank you, Ms. Kuznar, and thank you, Keller Williams. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. So Keller Williams representatives for showing up and speaking. 
Um, okay. I appreciate everyone bearing with, and, with me on that. Next item is much more simple, Senior Center Sports Center copier contract. This is in your packet on page nine. Uh, Mr. Duncan, you want to take it real quick, please? Yes, sir, real quick. Self this, these are the last two copiers to be included into our copier agreement that we have with three. Oh, excuse me, three copiers. So uh, we're just adding it into our um, our existing agreement so that way all of our copiers are under the same agreement and we'll have it with each and every one of them. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Mind blown. Uh, what do I hear on this item? I'll make a motion to um, forward this to full council for approval on the copiers. Thank you, Ms. Kuznar. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. I have a motion and a second to forward this to full council for the contractual agreement with Dex Imaging uh, to bring recreational department copiers onto the same lease. Uh, this would actually be a reduction in cost, so we can appreciate that as well, of about 400 and some dollars and cents. All right, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Carries unanimous, board to full council. Thank you, committee. Last item is going to be for FY23 surplus projection plan. This is a little bit different than what we've done in the past, and I think Mr. Duncan as well as Ms. Abercrombie would probably like to comment on it. Uh, Mr. Duncan, you're up first. Thank you, sir. Just uh, real quick. Uh, so annually, the city's finance director prepares a preliminary report of anticipated revenues and expenditures for the prior fiscal year. This report, uh, in addition to highlighting capital expenditures of the prior year, also includes a recommendation for the allocation of the surplus revenues for various capital projects. Uh, in prior years, a spending plan would be incorporated into the fiscal year budget modification. This year, staff is requesting council approve of the spending plan and we'll incorporate those expenses into a budget amendment later this year. So the recommendation, so the finance director is projecting a surplus between 2.8 and 3.3 million for FY 2023. Staff's follow, uh, proposing the following expenditures from surplus funds. Uh, first, 175,000 sports center equipment. We actually had budgeted to borrow that money and, and pay for that equipment after receiving the bids back for the financing and the terms. Uh, it just is now a staff recommendation that we just go ahead and pay cash or pay go for that versus financing it. It just didn't seem reasonable uh, given the, the low dollar figure of what we're uh, buying and everything like that. So that we're just looking to incorporate that there. Uh, the next thing is we'd like to acquire two medical quick response vehicles for the Malden Fire Department. So this will be uh, light trucks that can go out and be called for uh, BLS and, and uh, types of calls and not rolling a fire truck for that. Next is a citywide strategic plan, which was on one of our uh, must do, could do, should do lists. Uh, and so we believe uh, working on that project starting this year would be a good idea as we continue to uh, uh, develop the vision uh, the council does for the city. Next, uh, something we talked about earlier, the fire station headquarters owner items. Uh, then also um, we do have the railroad crossing as part of the Jenkins Street, Jenkins Court project. We do have a projected estimate of $1.1 million for that cost right now. We're wanting to earmark uh, these funds for that. We also, as Mr. Charles had mentioned earlier, we have MSIP improvement uh, reimbursements that are coming from Maverick Yards. So we're allocating some resources for that. And then the last item there is an item that we recently been discussing internally was that we still have a comp time uh, process internally and it has accrued a rather large balance. So what we're doing is we're just asking for the earmark of the potential revenue to be used to, to eliminate that program if council wants to eliminate the program. We're not ready and prepared to talk about a new policy tonight, but we did at least want to include that in the plan should uh, council want to move forward with a, a new approach with that part of our budget. And then the remaining balance would go to the fund for so everything stated here would still have to be done in a budget amendment at the end of the year. Yes, sir. Just a prelim, not just. This is a preliminary plan of what, in the event that we have a surplus, um, what it would look like, where staff would allocate funds. Absolutely. Questions, comments, concerns, motions, denials. Ms. King. 
Y'all see me holding my head at the. <laughs> Y'all know <laughs> that comp time. Good grief! I thought we did away with that way prior to you, Mr. Duncan. So um, I was very disappointed to hear about that and then to see it in writing. Um, I recall that we had talks in 2018, 2019 that. We do not have comp time, so when I see a memo come out, and I'm not looking, I'm kind of like when I was talking. You can look at me. I, I'm okay, fine. we talked about. I got it. it. <laughs> so you know, to see this and the yeah. number and knowing the number of hours out there, it was just mind-boggling because um, I don't think um, this council was aware of that. Um, We're still doing our homework. I, not to interrupt. No, you're fine, ma'am. But I wanted to say we did find the FLSA policy from 2011. We did see some language in a committee uh, in PW in 2017. Um, there's reference to a policy in 2016 um, that that was in a memo, but I think that that was uh, a scriber's error in the memo and was actually trying to reference the 2011. So we're still doing our homework to try to figure out because the mayor had a similar recollection as you did when I was telling him about this as well. And so we're trying to hunt down the minutes and if any council members who recall a conversation about it, um, I'd love to to pick your brain on it because that's why we're trying to figure out what is you know what has happened and what we uh, can look at because right now it shows on the books that we've got a pretty large liability there, and we need so we we've, we've got to figure it out. And the way that um, police officer time is being calculated right now creates additional. Uh, uh, comp time every pay period based on the way it's working right this day for for however it is but that's that's just what right we're currently not doing. no we're not going to write policy tonight but right. um again and we can talk about it later but my recollection is right what where we are today that there were a lot of department or a couple of departments that had a lot of comp time on the books and during a finance policy meeting, or it might have been during budget time, we're like, no, we, the city does not have comp time. So <laughs> we definitely need to get that under control in my in my opinion. But otherwise, I like your document. I like your <laughs> forward thinking and planning. Um, I like a plan. So um, that's all I got. Excuse me. Nothing. All right, what do I hear on a motion? Uh, Mr. Chair, I make the motion to forward the fiscal year 2023 surplus projection plan to full council for approval. Thank you, Ms. King. I have a motion to forward this to full council with a recommendation of approval. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on this item? Hearing none, all those in favor to forward this to full council with recommendation of approval, say aye. 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 Carries unanimous. It'll be on the next council meeting. Thank you for the the back Ms. King's thoughts. I love the idea of looking and projecting out and trying to go ahead and wrap our minds around what the current needs of the city are so, and then putting that in paper. Um, okay, next item is going to be public comment. We have a second section for public comment. Any one online? Seeing none, committee concerns. Seeing none, what do I hear on adjournment? So moved. A motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Carries in the mass. We stand adjourned. Last item for committee meetings are going to be recreation. Mr. Allgood's going to set a record for fastest. You cannot be tap, I agree. <laughs> With all due respect. <laughs> all right. It's currently 8.08. We will now commence the Recreation Committee meeting. All members are present, Mr. Matney, Mr. Reynolds, and myself, as well as our Recreation Director, Bart Cram Cumlander, and our City Administrator, Seth Duncan. First is public comments. Do we have any online or any in the audience? Hearing none. Next is reading and approval of the minutes. What is the pleasure of council? Move for approval is presented. I have a motion for approval. Do I have a second? Second. 
I hear a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. There's no opposed. All right. First up is a uh, report from our city uh, officer, Bart Comlander, recreation director. And he left. Oh, there he is. Oh, you left. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chair. Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Allgood, Council, Committee. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about our budget. We're doing well uh, in that so far. Our fall sports are fixing to begin tonight, but we got uh, a gully washer, so we had to postpone, so we'll get the practices in the rest of the week. We are up in uh, some of our numbers. Uh, Mr. Matney, you asked about football last month, and looks like we're back. Our numbers are getting up. We got 165 kids, three teams. Uh, in 10U, which is our biggest age group, two, tens and two teams in 12U, two teams in 8U. Our baseball is roughly around 295. Our soccer program is about 211. Cheerleading's 95, and softball is 67. Uh, about close to 900 kids, give or take. So uh, we're doing well with that. Also, the Staff is working on an emergency action uh, program. Uh, I've heard this. I heard, watched, was watching the news, and we all heard about the NBA, NBA star LeBron James' son collapsed. And so I looked. We did not have anything in place. And so uh, I asked staff to look at it, and we're working on that. We're going to get with the chief. And basically what it is is just a, an action plan in somebody collapses or whatever. Everybody's not running around trying to figure out what to do. We have that in place, and it's good for us as a city to have something like that. And so we're working on that. It's almost complete, and we'll work that. We'll work that as, as, at the sports center, and uh, with youth sports and our adult, uh, senior adult uh, activity as well, as they play pickleball. And if you want to play a pick pickup game of basketball, is when we'll have that in place in all locations. Um. I do want to say something about our staff. Um, you know, you sometimes around those folks at work, they're almost like your work family. And we go through diversities in life. And we lean, in, lean on one another when we go through those diversities in our life. And when you see these guys uh, out there, I, you know, I know they get a pat on the back. Uh, we are probably, our staff and our department are around, uh, I would say, uh, more people than pretty much any department. Uh, police comes to you, it's really not a good thing, right? And we're there with the uh, parents, dealing with the parents, dealing with uh, kids. Um, just got through a summer camp and some of those kids, um, you don't know what goes on at their home life. And our staff has done a good job this past summer, uh, just dealing with some of the toughness that kids go through. and. We have a real good staff, and I'll, I'll repeat what I said. We go through diversities in life, but we stand by each other and get us through those diversities in life. And so if you see those guys out, Willie, Amanda, um, Andre, you know, sometimes it's good to hear from y'all how y'all feel about them. And so I know you do. Um, on our senior program, we have uh, a candidate for that job. She will start uh, August 21st, I believe Mark said. She was very, very qualified. Uh, she comes from us from Tennessee. She's been in this area a year or so, uh, but I think we're going to fill those spot, fill those feet in there that was there before, and I think we're going to move that program uh, even higher than it is now. And so... If anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Any questions from the committee? Mr. Reynolds. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just one quick comment. Um, Mr. Comlander, I appreciate you saying, you know, sometimes and always looking how we can uh, better serve our citizens or um, our um, youth athletes and taking a situation that and, and, and applying it to the city of Malden and saying, okay, how, how would we respond in the same situation? So I appreciate you constantly looking for 
things like that. I would follow that up with um, another thing I'd like you to consider um, as you're thinking of a policy for a response policy for that is lost child or separated child policy because we've had situations at ballparks um, where child is separated and essentially that everyone's running around. Uh, so I think putting together a, an action plan for that as well would, would parlay nicely into what you're doing with a, a health plan as well. But again, thank you for taking that situation and, and trying to apply it to the city and how we can better serve our youth program. Thank you, sir. That's all I had, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Cumweather. Uh, up next, unfinished business, which we have none, and then new business, which is the discussion on the naming of the pedestrian bridge. Uh, you may recall last committee meeting, we had a discussion on this, and we asked Mr. Duncan to go back and uh, come up with a plan that we could look at. And so they have done that. So Mr. Duncan, if you could please walk us through that as well as any particular action you're looking for this committee to take. Yes, sir. So um, as, as you teed that up really well, I'll just kind of jump right into it. So uh, we, we reflected on what the committee said and we, we put together some ideas here um, and spread it around and got some feedback from committee members as well. And I appreciate that already uh, to incorporate that. But uh, really we're looking at it as a multi-phased approach. Um, the first, uh, Three phases would be staff and committee driven, and then the final two phases would be council, and then ultimately the action of, of getting the, the name out there. So under phase one, which is community input, staff will issue a press release, post on the so, uh, city website, and create post social media seeking names or ideas for names for the bridge from the public. Names or ideas from a, or for a name uh, should reflect a connection to the city of Malden, our history, our future, and not repeat, replicate, or mirror similarly named bridges. Submissions will be collected via social media platforms, form submission, and emails directly uh, directed to the communications manager. Names that are vulgar, profane, discriminatory, or sexual in nature will be rejected. Submissions will be accepted for 30 days. All responses will be collected and maintained by the communications manager and include the name of the provider if possible. A disclaimer will be included stipulating that names or ideas submitted do not uh, does not guarantee the author or submitter any particular recognition award or favor from the city and that contributions are voluntary and that would be the community input phase then we would move on to phase two which is staff recommendation after the submission deadline staff will compile names and ideas submitted into a master list a review committee consisting of the city administrator recreation director or designee communications manager community development director one representative from Hughes investment and two others for a total of seven members will review the submissions and recommended and recommend three to five names to the recreation committee the recommended names will be reviewed for possible trademark infringement the communications manager will prepare a memo for the recreation committee identifying the three to five recommended names along with all names submitted there is no guarantee implied or stipulated that any name submitted will be selected by the review committee or by council the council would still have free range the committee and council would have free range to come up with something different uh, in phase three, the committee review, the recreation committee, this committee will receive staff recommendations along with all names submitted for consideration at a regular scheduled meeting. The committee may choose to recommend a single name or a series of names or refer the entire topic to the full council for further consideration. We have carte blanche ability there. In phase four, council adoption at a regular scheduled council meeting, council will take up any recommendation made by the committee. Council will ultimately select and adopt a name for the bridge by resolution. And then in phase five, implementation, Upon adoption of a name by council, staff will begin the process of informing the public through a press release, website, posting, and social media announcement. Staff will order a commemorative plaque for the bridge and the new name as, uh, with the new name as part of the ribbon cutting ceremony. And so the staff recommendation, what we we're hoping for is not just feedback to the, this idea or these phases, but then also if uh, the committee's in agreement with the at least the first three phases for this process that we've been more or less given the green light to go ahead and begin getting public input and um, uh, organizing those ideas for the committee. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions for Mr. Duncan? Any feedback? Mr. Matney. I just want to appreciate uh, Seth and staff for, for sitting down and uh, fleshing that out. And uh, I think it's a, a well thought out plan. And thank you for that. Thank you, sir. Second that. Okay. So, Mr. Duncan, uh, are you looking for us to, as a 
does the committee have a motion that gives you approval? Or what exactly are you looking for? Yes, sir, just a, a motion to move forward with phases one through three um, of this plan, which means that we initiate the public announcement, the staff work to get the names, and then bring them back to the committee that can then take action, uh, board action to close. Okay. What is the pleasure of council? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. All right, there's a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. You now have your permission to move forward. All right, next up is a second public comment. Is anyone online or in person? Hearing none, any committee concerns? Hearing none, what's what say you on adjournment? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it. And we are concluded at 819.